Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and I just wanted to do my uh, first day coverage of the Square Enix uh, thing that we've been doing. They have a big thing going on at E3. They have a lot of booths showing off a lot of their games. And uh, day one was a little bit underwhelming. I'll go over some of the things that happened. Obviously, most of you want to know what happened with Final Fantasy XIV translations. Uh, so I'll get to that. But first, I just want to cover some of the things they did. They started off with a tour of the booths. And they quickly led into a fight. Some of the players were playing against Ifrit, trying to win swag, I guess I should say. You know, Ifrit bags and cheap t-shirts and things like that. And uh, it was pretty hard to watch because, you know, they did it three times in 10 minutes and all three times it took until the third time before they started attacking the infernal nail keep in mind this form of the ever fight was the level 30 version so it's the considerably easy easier version of the fight also the fight was done with eight people when it's designed for four so there's really no excuse to be able to lose it if you kill the nail the damage wasn't really high enough they had two healers they pretty much had everything they needed in order to successfully beat it but they ignored the nail all three times and that cost them their victory uh Saints Row 4, got some more information, you got to see a little bit more of the open world, uh, a demo of the gameplay and uh, how it's going to play, and more explanation as to how he became the president and what he's doing now as the president. Also some interesting information, if you change the uh, image of your gun, you actually get different effects, and apparently with the dubstep gun, if you change the effect, you get different soundtracks, so I really like that. There's just a little bit of information, there's a lot of superpowers, it was kind of veering away from what looked like a Saints Row game while still maintaining that very Saints Row feel. The community contest they're doing, if you go over to Twitter and you uh, hashtag uh, SQEX uh, contest or community or something like that, I didn't really enter so I'm not sure, or if you do uh, at uh, SQEX underscore events underscore NA, then uh, you can enter a contest if you have a huge Final Fantasy collection and you want to show it off. Uh, you have a chance at winning some decent swag to add to your collection. Uh, they did a brief interview about Kingdom Hearts 1.53 and Final Fantasy 15, but there wasn't much information. Most of the time was spent translating, and uh, it was mostly information that we've kind of already known. We just got to hear it directly from uh, Nomura's mouth. Um, some of the interesting information was why they did 1.5 and uh, what they're planning for 3, but mostly we got very vague information since there's still uh, pretty much a non-disclosure agreement for the employees all over this. But with that in mind, let's jump into what was said today at the Japanese Live Letter. Thank you, Reinhardt, for translating, as always. I will include a link to his Twitch below. He is a very, for those of you who don't know, Reinhardt is a very popular translator in the Final Fantasy XIV community. Usually when they do anything Japanese only, he's there to translate it, if not live, sometime after. He did it live today, but it wasn't a very... Uh, wasn't a very good live letter, I must say. They spent a lot of the time talking about E3, and they seemed to be less focused on the questions and more focused on just the, uh, you know, just E3 itself. So some things they covered. They talked about how it's going to be on a PlayStation 4 release. They said the date approximately early 2014. Um, there was no comment about a lot of the questions, though. Uh, one question was, will you need new registration codes for the PlayStation 4 version? Yoshi P said, don't worry, just play the PS3 version and there should be no problem. So, um, But he says he needs to go back to Japan and confirm that sometime in the next couple of weeks. So expect more information about that. He also disappointed me and said that the Scholar information will be revealed Thursday. Um, again, this is all translation, so hopefully it's tomorrow, but most likely Reinhardt's translations are right, they usually are, uh, and that Scholar information will in fact be coming Thursday, we can expect that along with Summoner and Arcanist. Um, they spoke a lot about the Ifrit fight, mostly just made fun of the eight people who played it, and uh, he was like, oh, I wanted to yell at them, get the nail, get the nail, and every time, and he was, and he thought how interesting it was that Americans get so angry when they fail on a fight, like yelling, damn, and things like that, and just how they were trying to communicate in the game, and how players just weren't understanding what the other players were trying to tell them, and by the time they finally did, it was too late. Uh, it was pretty funny to see Yoshi P, uh, you know, laughing about uh, the players who were playing it. It was really unfortunate because I, I had a bunch of friends watching too, and everyone was screaming, "Get the nail, kill the nail!" What have you never played an MMO before? Hopefully, those eight people don't ever see this channel because otherwise, they're probably going to have to duck their heads down and be like, "I didn't know." Anyway. Um, there wasn't really too much more information. Um, a lot of, again, a lot of it was about the PS4. They said there will be no special in-game items exclusively for the PlayStation 4 version because they don't want to give people the idea that Square Enix wants you to re-buy the game for PlayStation 4 because they're money-hungry or something like that. They mentioned very briefly the Coliseum somebody asked a question about, and that was that um, 
you can go there as many times as day as you want. It's a regular PvP battleground, you know, 4v4, AV8, that kind of stuff. And uh, you can go there as many times as you want to get PvP points to get the gear. Just as, you know, as long as you do it, you'll get points. He also mentioned Frontline PvP Battlegrounds, which Frontline is supposed to be, from what I understand, very similar to World vs. World in Guild Wars. Uh, in that it puts you against ser uh, other people from your server and other servers. So there's very vague information. There's not a lot about it. But he says it most closely resembles World vs. World vs. World in Guild Wars. Uh, he says that you can expect that Battleground to come between patches 2.2 and 2.3 but he was leaning a little bit more to, towards 2.3 due to the fact that they've been focusing so much on the launch the production of the other patches has been delayed a little bit so um he doesn't have an exact timing but we're still looking at two to two and a half months for a major patch that's what he's aiming for and, and yoshi p will hopefully deliver on that other than that i don't really have much information they kind of spoke about the effort players a little bit more they uh they showed off a lot it took about 15 minutes to show off a picture of lightning from final fantasy 13 and that uh they that they created recreated her in final fantasy 14 and that he kind of wants to add something from final fantasy 13 into final fantasy 14 he wants to sort of integrate lightning's character somehow make her more iconic and uh it's just not too very it's not very interesting for people unless they give us something concrete it was mostly just wouldn't it be cool if like one of those conversations but it was between the developers people kept coming in and out of the booth it was very distracting and it was kind of annoying uh i wasn't a huge fan of the live letter uh was there any other information they uh lots of they spoke about DirectX 11 support and that they're working very hard on it you know that's something that's to be expected the only other question I really saw is that somebody asked, will the stories be different if you start in different towns? And the answer was, for the first 15 levels or so, yes. But once you start traveling to the other cities, the quests all become very mainstreamed. Uh, you'll be going to uh, quests through... Um through the main story so basically what that means is uh your dungeons no matter what you'll eventually have to do dungeons um for the main story and that's how you unlock them in the duty finder uh there's also a point that you cannot log you cannot uh log into a duty finder uh queue with more than one class you pick one class and then when you you do whatever you want and when the queue strikes you'll be told to switch to that class or you won't be allowed into the dungeon and things like that so they're making sure that people don't abuse it and they start being you know like they just start being unnecessary uh you know assholes i guess you could say and let's see do i have anything else uh nope 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 dying and signing gear they just said they're working on it to make sure that it works consistently you know nothing crazy um ask about changing face paint and uh markings he said yeah hair and paint but markings they're gonna have to talk about he says th the developer says it's up to him so if you if people ask for a yoshi p will probably just say yeah go ahead why not i don't see the problem in it plastic surgery why not uh what else do we have crafters will be able to I'm, i forgot to mention this crafters will uh have some sort of role in frontline i'd imagine very similarly to the roles that they had in hamlet but nothing too crazy you know crafters in pvp i'm sure most crafters would rather actually pvp than craft in pvp but with the way frontline works it's safe to say you're going to need some crafters um let's see assured players that the difficulty of regional data centers will be handled that means that uh basically what that means is there's some people who are worried that their link shells are going to break because of the regional data centers you know Jap japanese players are going to want to play on the japanese servers and the english north and the uh, english and the europeans are going to want to play on those so that they get less latency so link shells that were previously mixed players might segregate back towards the servers that are closer to them and we might have problems with attendance and things like that they said they will do whatever they can to make sure that players aren't left behind and that they don't just end up abandoning their link shells there's not there wasn't much more on this it was a very broad uh, very broad answer but we'll see where it leads in the future to come um they said that they don't know about playstation plus this was a big question playstation plus is, re is required for the playstation 4 to play online uh for those of you who don't know that that is a fact you do need playstation plus now the big question is what if you go to play final fantasy 14 on the play on the playstation 4 that means you're gonna have to pay a monthly fee for playstation plus and you're gonna have to pay a monthly fee for final fantasy 14. now if you're buying a playstation 4 just for final fantasy 14 that's more of a problem but it's still kind of redundant to have to have both because there might be some people who do want it only for that and there might be some people who only want it for a single player experience except for final fantasy 14 so it's really hard to say where where you can draw the line here because there's there's very very many ways to interpret it as how it's wrong and how it's not that big of a deal but there's definitely very little room to say that it's all right so we're going to get more confirmation about that in the coming weeks as well so be on the lookout for that um 
No confirmation about a data transfer from PS3 to PS4, but he again assured people not to worry. If you play on the PlayStation 3 version, we'll make sure that your stuff doesn't move over. Since it's a cross plat, since the game is cross-platform already, there should be no problems transferring your data over, especially because it's going to be linked to your PlayStation Network account. I can't see too much of a problem arising from that. And do I have anything else? I have notes on both computers, so if it seems a little bit awkward. Um, nope, story differs. Uh, he's, he, Yoshi said he's going to have a translator for Thursday, which means the pace is going to be very, very slow, because I know Yoshi P likes to talk a lot, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, we're just going to have to put up with it, I suppose. Um... And other than that, there really isn't much. They mostly just spoke about E3, and then they moved on to some radio show that I didn't understand at all, and I had no translators for, so I figured I'd keep it out of this. If you have any information about where I can find that, uh, please post it. So day one, not that great, and I actually don't think day two is going to be that great, especially for those of us who are looking primarily for Final Fantasy XIV data. Uh, unfortunately, all we can do is wait, and um, hopefully... We'll find out more. Um, I'd also like to announce that I'm going to be doing a new series called the Final Fantasy XIV Journal. Um, I'm going to call it the Journal Series or something like that. I haven't decided quite on a name, but it's going to be a series that basically where I speak to you about my events and explain how they work. I'm going to be doing class overviews. I'm going to be doing a lot, doing a lot with screenshots. Uh, doing a lot just to show you. I can show you bosses with screenshots. I can show you abilities with screenshots. I can show you monsters with screenshots. I can tour a lot of the unique areas in the zone. So we're going to do tours. We're going to do dun we're going to do uh, area tours, dungeon tours, class uh, descriptions, and anything really that anyone asks for. I'll do my best to get it out there again because we can't have any audio or video. I will remind people at the end of all three uh, days of videos that I'm going to be doing this. Please like, favorite, subscribe, share if you have cool friends. I like to say that at the end of every video too. If this your first time here and also again a special thanks to Reinhardt. please go follow him on twitch also follow me though because you know it'd be kind of weird and uh, tell him that i sent you because uh, i'm sure he'd love to know that he's getting more followers and whenever you're looking for information that needs to be translated Reinhardt is definitely the guy to go to so big shout out to you Reinhardt. and uh again thank you for watching and hopefully day two and day three go a little bit better for us so uh take care